What's going on guys? Welcome back to Carrasco Ranch. My name is Robert. In this video, we're going to discuss supplemental feeding of deer, uh, specifically cottonseed. We're going to discuss the pros and the cons of doing cottonseed. Down here in South Texas, we do a lot of cottonseed and a lot of supplemental feeding in uh, absence of food plots. So I just finished reading some articles, some scientific articles, basically um, done here in South Texas, uh, done here in Texas, not specifically South Texas, but in Texas uh, through uh, the A&M extensions and as well as uh, extensions of A&M, uh, different universities, part of A&M. And we're, we're going to first discuss some of the negatives, um, some of the cons that they found using supplemental feeding specifically as well as cottonseed. So some of the negative and some of the cons that they found um, as a result of feeding cottonseed was, so cottonseed isn't uh, so much palatable as corn or protein pellets. So you usually have to train deer to come to those cottonseed feeders. It's not something they naturally would have eaten. So you have to kind of train them to eat something like that. So how most people do that is they usually mix in uh, corn or something else that's an attractant to these deer to bring the deer in to start uh, consuming the cottonseed. One of the things they found with that is um, in proximity to those cottonseed feeders, they noticed that the bob white and the turkey populations began to de decrease. So basically nest grounding birds, the populations began to decrease um, in correlation with those cottonseed feeders. Reason for that, what they found was, so there was corn mixed in with the cottonseed well, pigs, wild hogs, feral hogs were, began to find that cottonseed because of the corn. Not specifically for the cottonseed, but because the corn was mixed in with the cottonseed. So uh, feral pigs, if you don't know, they like to root around and they'll go and eat um, eggs of turkey quail. So for that reason, they found a correlation um, to a decrease of nest grounding birds. Uh, they found a, a decrease in nest grounding birds as far as quail and turkey go. Also raccoons. Raccoons began to start sorting through that cottonseed, pulling out the corn. Raccoons like to feed on the eggs of turkeys and quail. So that was a correlation that they found. Um, just because cottonseed is really hard to uh, get the deer to come to eat that stuff, it's not something they're usually eating anyway. So you do have to train the deer. And one way most people do train deer is by putting in, mixing in corn, with the cottonseed to attract the deer to start eat, begin eating that cottonseed. So that was one correlation that they found. That's obviously a con. Um, again, over time, you would start to uh, weed out some of that corn and just do pure cottonseed. But for the beginning, you may see a decrease in your turkey populations and your quail populations in and around those um, cottonseed feeders. Let me know in the comments, uh, do you provide any supplemental feeding for your deer? And if so, um, have you seen any, any uh, changes in your deer herd? Have you seen any larger antler growth, more fawn offspring, uh, more, more offspring? Uh, let me know in the comments if you feed supplemental food, either, pro, I mean, uh, either protein pellets, cottonseed, or food plots. And let me know what it's done for your property. So one of the cons that they found while feeding cottonseed was that monogastrics, it is toxic to mono, monogastrics. But uh, since white-tailed deer are ruminants, basically a ruminant is somebody who's able to process plant-based material, uh, usually by fermentation. And uh, so deer, mule deer, uh, fallow deer, these are all ruminants. And they did find that they do show some type of resistance to glossy paw. Um, they, so basically they, they, uh, they researched this one doe that was particularly, she had a low concentration of glossy paw in her body. They didn't see any negative effects, negative correlations uh, when she did give uh, birth to her offspring, a fawn. Now, interesting enough, another con they did find was, um, so glossy paw affected the male and female fallow deer uh, a little differently. So there wasn't too many negative side effects concerning the female fallow deer. But when it came to the male fallow deer, um, they began to notice that, well, obviously they took, they took uh, his semen and ran it in the lab. They noticed a lower concentration of testosterone. They also lowered, noticed a lower body score. And they also noticed a lower antler growth 
as well as lower body conditions. So for the male fallow deer, he did, they did show negative effects to cottonseed. Now, a reason that's important is because a lot down here in South Texas, a lot of people have high fence ranches where they have different type of exotic deer. So that's something important to know if I had a high fence ranch and I was going to go out and feed cottonseed, um, knowing that it might affect different deers in different ways. So in the white-tailed deer, they didn't find any detrimental effects the way they did in the male fallow deer, um, other than a low testosterone count. So over time, uh, glossy pulp begins to build up in the fat layers of these deer, and uh, in high concentrations, it can actually cause uh, sterility in these male bucks. Now in relation to how it may affect the sterility of a male white-tailed buck, uh, basically depends on the body conditions of that specific deer, the weight, all that takes into account um, when uh, trying to figure out how much a specific deer can consume without becoming sterile. There are a few studies out there that suggest um, giving your deer at least 45, some say 60 days um, before they start beginning to uh, reproduce or go out and find a receptive doe. Um, so usually that's after the antler growing season, you would try to start weaning them off all this cotton seed so they can start to deplete, deplete all of that glossy pall buildup in their fat storage. Um, honestly, I mean, there's different research that goes 45, 30 days, up to 60 days. Um, in my opinion, I would honestly go the max. I would do the 60 days after the antler growing season. And of course, in your, in your area, it varies. Down here in South Texas, we have a late rut. They start to breed a lot later up there up north than you would want to start it up a little sooner. So... It's based on your area. Um, if you know that they are going to begin rutting in December, then by, I'd say, September, October, you would want to be starting to lean them off, uh, wean them off these, this cotton seed, um, just so they can get all, all that glossy paw for the breeding season. So like I said, guys, you would want to start weaning off your, your whitetail bucks off the uh, cotton seed at least, at least 45 days. I would push to 60 if you can, 60, 45 to 60 days. Um, before they begin their breeding season so that glossy paw can begin to exit that body. Um, again, this is going to affect deer different ways. You may have some bucks that may need longer, some bucks that don't need as long. Again, depending on the body weight of that deer depends on how much they can consume before it begins to cause sterility in that specific deer. Up there up north, y'all have some really big deer uh, pushing, you know, 250 up to 300 pounds. Down here in South Texas, our deer don't get as large, so it'd probably take a lot less consumption of that cotton seed before it causes sterility compared to a deer who's 280. Um, he can probably consume a little more in comparison to the deer that's weighing, say, 200. So it's a case-by-case -case situation again, but I would push for those 60 days before the breeding season just to be sure you can get out as much glossy pole um, in, in their bodies out of there before they begin to breed. Another con of cottonseed is it's uh, very labor intensive. So cottonseed, some, they, I begin, I believe they do are making them in uh, 50 pound uh, sacks now. Um, but usually, usually you can get it a lot cheaper in bulk. And usually what they do is they bring in a big old truck, they dump it on your property. And from there, you basically have to take it out on a flatbed, take it on a truck and put it into your cottonseed feeders. So it is labor intensive, but it is more cost effective. A con to the cottonseed is that it's not uh, as palatable as protein pellets or as corn or any other thing like that. So you will have to bring in the deer to begin to train them basically to start eating this cottonseed. Usually how you do that is um, you throw some corn in the cottonseed and mix it up real well. As they're coming in to get corn, they're also intaking cottonseed. And basically that's how you begin to train the deer to eat the cottonseed. But be aware that if you do begin to mix corn and cottonseed together in those feeders, usually hogs and raccoons will begin to start sorting through your cottonseed, trying to get that corn out of the cottonseed. Um, again, they will probably not eat that cottonseed as it is toxic for them. So they'll begin to just make a mess everywhere and you may just have to go back and put it back in your feeder. But again, that's only temporarily until you begin to train your deer to go and eat that cottonseed. Then you can wean out of that corn and just feed straight cottonseed. So a pro to cottonseed 
is that it's a lot cheaper than feeding protein pellets. Um, you can get quite a bit of cottonseed for a fraction of the cost for protein. So that is a pro. It is more cost effective. If you cannot afford to feed protein pellets, you can always do cottonseed. That is a pro. So one of the pros to feeding cottonseed is that it's not heavily favored by non-target species. What I mean by non-target species is um, deer, I mean uh, raccoons and hogs um, usually will eat our corn and our protein. But when it comes to cottonseed, um, it's actually slight toxic. It actually causes toxicity in hogs and raccoons. And they, they know that, so they will sort out if you begin to mix corn and cottonseed together, they will begin to sort out that cottonseed and just pick at that corn. Um, obviously they know that it's not good for them. So that's one good thing if you wanna target just specifically deer or ruminants in general, that's a great way just to hit your target species since hogs and raccoons will not eat your cottonseed. Another pro to feeding cottonseed is that the feeders themselves are very inexpensive. Basically you can make it with either some chicken wire or you can even make it with some, uh, some fencing. Just basically make a little circle and you just throw the cottonseed into that little, that little circle you made with the fencing and that's a cottonseed feeder. Um, it doesn't take much. It's a lot cheaper than a protein feeder. Protein feeders run hundreds or thousands of dollars depending on the size. So again, it's a very cost effective way to provide some supplemental food to your deer herd. Another pro to feeding cottonseed is in hard to reach areas or in climates that don't get much water like we do down here in South Texas. Um, it's a lot easier to just feed cottonseed than trying to do a food plot. Um, a food plot down here in South Texas is going to be really hard to get up off the ground and to get it irrigated or watered. It's going to take some work. Um, so in areas of uh, extreme drought or extreme low rainfalls, it would uh, behoove some landowners to feed cottonseed rather than um, food plots. Um, as another source of protein or supplemental feeding. But again, um, you could do pellets as well, but again, pellets are a lot more expensive in comparison to cottonseed. So what you all are waiting for, so how much can I expect out of my deer herd, my bucks, to, how much can I expect my bucks to gain um, by feeding cottonseed? Um, there's different estimates on how much a deer can gain and again, it's gonna go based off of a specific deer. If that deer has suffered an in injury, then a lot of that energy he's intaking is gonna to go towards uh, fixing that injury, healing that injury. Um, also on the age of the deer, is he still growing his structural body? Is he still putting a lot of energy towards his muscle growth and skeletal growth? It's all gonna vary. Um, some of the research I did find, it ranged between 10 and 14% growth and antler growth for whitetail bucks. Again, that's gonna be specific towards a specific deer. Um, it's gonna vary, I'm sure, greatly. So I know y'all are interested and that's probably a question I might get, so I thought I'd answer it here. So basically, you're not gonna get a 120 inch deer up to a 200 inch deer just by feeding cottonseed, um, but you will see some slight improvements. So on average, you can expect maybe about a 10% to about a 14% in antler growth. Um, so about a 120 scoring deer uh, may get up to about 136. Again, that's at taking 14% of that 120. Um, but like I said, if it's gonna be your first year, that first year is really gonna be training the deer to begin to eat that cottonseed. So you may not get that 14% right off the bat. The pro to feeding cottonseed is, it's uh, very rich in protein and in fat. So protein and fat are both energy that a deer can use. Um, normally the body will go through and use the preferred source of energy, which will be your protein. Um, after it has depleted your protein sources, then it will begin to start drawing energy from the fat. Um, and in the fat, that's where you begin to see uh, glossic pulse storage as well. Um, but since it is high in fat, another source of energy to use. So in areas where you have uh, either poor soils low water, low rainfall, it would behoove some landowners to provide cottonseed as an additional 
uh, food source for these deer. And uh, just a helpful tip, you can always increase the consumption of uh, your supplemental feeding as far as pellets and cottonseed by usually placing that those food sources close to a water source. Um, you can actually increase the consumption of, of the protein intake by these deer. All right, guys, well, I hope you all found that helpful. Um, if you did, definitely consider subscribing and definitely give this a like. And uh, head on over there and check out some of my other videos uh, related to deer hunting, deer hunting tactics. Without further ado, guys, we'll catch you later. Be careful, be good, take care, God bless.